Good morning, folks. Oh, that sun is bright today. It is Friday. We're going to kick off this weekend. I love Friday. I think I love Monday more. Let's talk a little bit about the updates in social media because you know that is one of the things I am big on for sure. So let's talk a little bit more from yesterday about the F8 conference, which is Facebook's big announcement conference they do every year. They just had it earlier this month. Let's talk a little bit about some of the updates. One that I thought was really, really interesting. We all know that uh, Facebook is the Mac Daddy, am I right, of all social media, right? So if you're a marketer, that's what this, uh, so this particular study is done by Social Media Marketing World. And it's a study of, I believe, 6,000 marketers nationwide. And this particular study showed that, as we already know, Facebook is numero uno. Uh, by far, two-thirds say that Facebook is the number one platform for them. Facebook has... 2 billion monthly users, regular monthly users, uh, which just dwarfs Instagram, which is about 800 million. So Facebook is Mac Daddy. Two thirds said that's the one platform that they live on for their business and that they uh, can have. Oh, what are they out of today? We'll be closing at what? At 9 p.m. today. I can live with that. I won't be back. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Sometimes they're out of Coke. That's bad. So, what I want to talk about, though, is guess what the number two is. Good morning, Mr. Edrington. How you doing up there in the fine state of Tennessee? Uh, I was kind of shocked because I think all I think everybody I know in marketing would say that the number two is Instagram. Wrong. Shockingly, it is one that I've been intending to focus on more and adding to my list, which is any guesses? LinkedIn. It is LinkedIn, which I think is fascinating. Um, that's number two. And I don't know about you guys, but I massively underuse LinkedIn. Large Diet Coke, please. One away. Thank you. How many of you guys use LinkedIn like use LinkedIn? I have a LinkedIn, uh, and thanks to my daughter, she made sure that I got up to over uh, 500, you know, connections so it didn't look bad. You know, you get to 500, it says 500 or more. So I've got that, but how many of you really use LinkedIn? Um, Gary Vaynerchuk and lots of others have really talked up its importance for use in actual business. Other than the social portion of it, it's really a big deal. Yeah, I think I've seen you, Ann, over on, a, on LinkedIn a bit, and I, I need to do better. Um, so here's what I love. Like Gary V will say, he's like, when you record a, a vlog or a podcast, he goes, you shoot the video for your vlog. So for those that want to watch visually on Facebook, on YouTube, they've got that option. <laughs> then if you want to, what they do is then you go and you take your audio and you push that over to your podcast. Now, then you have someone strip that, basically transcribe it so that you can upload it as a blog article. Um, and then take the best segments, he says some, a shorter maybe version, for a LinkedIn article. So he, he recognizes the importance of LinkedIn. And then you also take shorter portions of your video clip and you make your little 15 to, to 60 second, your, you know, the best shots, the, the things where you said something funny or profound, whatever it was, and you make that in. So, so what we've got to do is we've got to multi-purpose our content. But I know Gary is very big on LinkedIn and talks it up big. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to rededicate myself to spending at least a little more time on LinkedIn and hopefully not a lot of time, but more using my virtual assistants to help me repurpose the content that I already have. Also be curious to see how many of you have used virtual assistants because that's a, a, a new thing that we have really found some, some success with. I know Mr. Edrington has as well. Uh, so, okay, some other features uh, that we want to talk about that have come out from F8. I know I'm kind of mixing the two, but I'm just so excited that the social media report has come out and we can get it online. I think it's like 44 pages. Again, showing Facebook number one as we figured, but LinkedIn, a strong number two in importance for marketing. Uh, as far as Facebook, one new feature they've come up with is the ability to clear your history. Don't know if it's active today because everything I watch, read, and listen to is always Facebook is rolling out. So it, it's it's imminent if it's not there today. It's coming soon, very soon, to theaters near you. Uh, so you're going to be able to clear your history. So the point of this is if you have a lot of things showing up in your feed that are things you maybe were never interested in or you're no longer interested in, you would have the opportunity to do a reset. I know a lot of people that, in my age range especially, that talk about, oh, retargeting, they don't use that word, but being creepy or invasive, and I think it's fascinating because I know my daughter 
Savannah, she loves it. She's always going, I love that Facebook knows I like buying dresses on Facebook. She goes, they keep showing me cute dresses and I keep shopping right there on Facebook. And, and the great thing is with AI, artificial intelligence, they get better and better at picking out uh, the kind of dresses you're buying. And so you'll see more of the type of things you like, which is really pretty awesome. So there's a lot of us uh, that really like that feature. Thank you. Okay, got some tacos. And uh, so I think it's a great feature. But for some people, uh, they want to get a fresh start and start over, so that's good too. I love what Gary Vaynerchuk said. I don't know if you... Hello. Hello. Thank you, ma'am. You bet. I don't know if you guys have heard him say this, but I love it. He goes, people grab about, there's all this negative stuff in my feed. There's all this stuff I don't like, all this garbage in my feed. And the sponsored post. He makes a great point. And he goes, quit looking at garbage. He goes, I, I give you a challenge. If you want to see positive, upbeat things you like in your feed, go look at those things for a month or a week. And that's what Facebook will show you. Facebook shows you what you have been looking at. So if you're seeing negative garbage, it's because you've been looking at and clicking on negative garbage. Don't do that. Uh, so they're going to give you the ability, if you've been doing some stupid stuff like that, looking at negative, argumentative stuff, and you want to be done with it, you're going to be able to clear your history. Uh, now this, I promised you some talk, hey Milton, about online dating. And this is pretty cool because a lot of you probably know that Wes and I met online. So I am a big fan of online dating. I think it should have been around forever, you know. I mean, what a great thing. It's kind of like I always joke and say, you know, it was kind of like Amazon. You could go on there. You could filter out what you want. You could shop around. And I found this amazing man. I put him in my cart and selected one step put, uh, checkout. So I was, I was ready to roll. He was it. And that was that from then on. Three years later, happily married. Facebook is going to get into the online dating business. Can you believe that? Yeah, they are. Uh, the report that came out, it is the social media marketing report. I will put a link in the notes um, when this is done to you guys if you want to download the free 44-page report. Um, so yeah, Facebook's getting into online dating. We don't know when or how, but an F8 Zuckerberg has announced that that's where they're going. Because as he says, people come up to him already and say, my spouse and I, we met online. Or my partner, my boyfriend, whatever it is, we met online uh, on Facebook just through friends of friends or through groups, whatever it may be. So they're going to have a dedicated portion of Facebook for it. And it won't, my understanding is it won't be like mixed in with things that we see, those of us who are happily married, but it'll be something you can elect to go look at and set up a separate profile. It won't just be mixed in. Um, they did say that they're primarily going to do uh, the Facebook dating through events and through groups. So through groups where you have something in common or events that you've signed up to attend uh, they didn't really say virtually or in real life. I don't know. Um, but my, my big joke about that is people always say, oh, y'all met online. I don't think I could date online. I love to tell people, you know, uh, we met online, but I got to tell you, uh, we dated in real life. So you don't really date online. You just meet there. Um, so events and groups, uh, you know, but so then they thought that basically people are going to be recommended to you, which it sounds a little eHarmony-ish to me, so I'm not a fan of that. I did not like the eHarmony process which was we're going to tell you who you like you tell us all these things about you and we'll tell you who you like that may be great i guess if you were just you know blindfolded or something but you know somebody and i might both like seinfeld but i it's starting to be attracted to them and i was just not that impressed with the people that i found in my inbox uh, on that system so that, that was not for me i like match where i could find what i wanted so we're going to see which way facebook goes with it they did say you will have a separate dating f uh, profile and they will not be recommending existing friends because they're like if you're already friends we'll figure it out and get together uh, we're gonna be finding it could be friends of friends uh, but they will be finding ways to parallel you up and suggest people to you um, what is it not and the great thing is whatever you're doing within the dating portion will not be shown to your normal friends so people won't see uh, your activities there they're also gonna have messenger which is you probably know Facebook is all about messenger there will be a separate portion for dating. So if you are messaging uh, somebody in a dating atmosphere, it will not mix in with your normal messages. And now I just wish they would add this functionality for what is your least fa favorite message? It's the one I get all day, every day. I hate it. I get 15, 20, 50, and I think, oh, I've got a message. This is great. They all say, Frank Burns, MASH fans, has joined Messenger. I was like, so what? You know, stop telling me. They literally, right? They tell you every person that joins. So when you have real messages, it's hard to find them anymore. I don't like that. Um, great. If you must tell me that, put it in a tab. I don't want to see that. I want to know if I've got a real message. 
anyway, I digress. So, they are also really, really increasing the importance of groups. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I would love to know if any of you have uh, such an inclination. I would love to know how many of you, how many groups do you interact with on an average day or an average week? Not how many you're a member of, because if I go open up my groups tab, I find out I'm in a lot more groups than I thought. How many do you, do you use? Um, you know, I probably average using two groups a day, um, and I would probably say that I'm in six groups or so that are really relevant to me. And would and when I probably what really happens is I'll use five or six in a day and then I'll go a day or two and won't use any. So I probably average a couple, but groups are hugely important. And they are really talking about in the mobile atmosphere even creating a separate tab. So when you're in Facebook, there'll be a button for your groups. So that will make it much easier uh, to interact. I know they had a groups app at one point that they've taken back, but they wanna put it directly into uh, the user interface on Facebook uh, at the app itself. So the really uh, extra bonus there is they are apparently coming up with a plugin for groups if, that you want to create, and a lot of marketers are really going deep in groups. I know Caitlin Batcher uh, is a great authority if you want to do some research on using closed private groups or open groups, whatever you want. And they are coming up with an app that you can embed in your website or in uh, emails saying, uh, join my group. And that's a wonderful way, whether you're a nonprofit, whether you're a marketer, a political group, whatever you are, great way to let people know how to connect with you on another level. You know, I'm a big proponent of, I don't think technology is separating us the way we were afraid. I think it's different, but I think it's finding ways to bring us together. So I'm excited about that plug-in. Um, I'm also curious, my understanding is that Facebook is very, very big on wanting us to have Messenger basically replace text at some point. Uh, they want you to use Messenger more often than you text. I'm curious, what would you think your ratio of using Messenger is to text and why? I would say I'm maybe 10% Messenger, 90% text still at this point, but I do see it growing every day. And here's the why. I think the reason we do it is text still feels more personal so you text your close immediate friends, you text people that you're really comfortable that they want to hear from you, and you use Messenger for those that you're not quite ready to give out your cell phone, right? That's kind of the situation with that. That's my thought. I'm going to say I'm 10%. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, Facebook Stories, they talked a little bit about that because they keep saying it's going to grow, and I'm sure it will because stories are growing in every platform. I've yet to see it, but being that Facebook is the Mac Daddy, it will be the Mac Daddy of stories, let's face it. So, I got a couple more things I would love to talk about, but I've arrived at work, and you know on the drive, we finish on time. And, we're about to go have a Skype chat with our new virtual assistant, Gary, in the Philippines. So, I'll let you know what's going on with number two virtual assistant, Gary, uh, maybe in tomorrow's episode. And I will post a link to the Social Media Marketing World's 44-page report, so you guys can check it out. Talk to y'all soon.